So I thought I'd do a little review of a new mode we're building in uh, for geothermal systems. And it's pretty slick. It's just in its infancy a little bit, but it'll give you an idea of what we're trying to do if you'd like to give us some feedback on it. So in the modes wise, just to explain this, this is the mode screen in Measure Quick. And if we tap on the modes, you can see we can test in cooling or heating. In this case, what you're looking at is um, a lot of air side stuff. So just a regular, uh, the first one here is just a regular DX uh, air conditioning heat pump. Then we do non-invasive, we do mini splits, multi-stage multi units, multi-circuits, and this is geothermal down here at the bottom. We also have geothermal heating, so you can test this in heating or cooling. Uh, we have some refrigeration test modes, then we have some, some quick tests for like evacuation and duct leakage screening and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna leave this in the geothermal mode, and I put some demo data in there that's pretty similar to, to uh, where Water Furnace uh, Series 5 would be running. Uh, the first thing is, just to show you this, this is System ID. System ID is just where we, we get the, um, uh, the year installed, the make and the model number. We can also take photos if we wanna take a photo of anything, like a photo of the labels uh, to, to mark that in there. And we pick up coordinates for where that piece of equipment's located. And the next step's really important. This is a profile. And the profile tells us a lot of information about the system. So again, another spot you can take equipment models and serial photos if you want to take those. But in this case here, we have it set up for geothermal. We have it set up for series five, which is the one we've sort of fiddled around with right now. Um, we have it set up, for the model number's an 018, so a ton and a half. We have all the standard sizes on that uh, list. And we got the type of compressor, and we use this for some compressor mapping we do, scroll rotary or, or reset. Then we've got our loop, whether it's open loop or closed loops. In this case, it's a closed loop, and we're at two and a half to three gallons per minute per ton. And then we can select our uh, fluid type. In this case here, you can see we have water or antifreeze selected. And if I tap off this, you see it's using the fluid factor 485. If I do something like switch to water, it'll switch it to 500. So we can do uh, water or uh, antifreeze fluid factors, and you can always enter your own fluid factor if you want. The year installed is just the um, you know the, the year you're putting it in. Nominal tonnage is auto populated when you select up above. It is a uh, 410A. It is a 17 sear plus with a TXV, and then you can set superheat and subcooling targets, or just leave them to the default. And we got a total external static uh, default of 0 0.50. Again, that can be adjusted. If there's extended performance ratings, we can enter extended performance, and those can be either custom or HRI design conditions. So, like, if the rated capacity of this was actually like I don't know, like uh, 17,500 BTUs, we could actually enter that in here. Uh, we can enter in as much information as we know, and it'll uh, let Measure Quick redo the calculations. Again, heat type in this is just, uh, we can also, you know, if we have different types of heat types, we can do this. In this case, it's just a heat pump, so we'll hit continue, and that gives us our basic profile for the system. Now, across the bottom here, there's, this is information about the system. This is loop measurements, this is air side measurements, this is performance measurements, and this is our weather data. We're gonna skip over here to the loop measurements for just a minute. And the loop measurements, if I tap this, you're gonna see it's, it's refrigerant pressures and temp as well as loop. So this is where, uh, typically this would come from probes. I just manually input the data, but we have a low pressure and high pressure. Those are gauge pressures, or suction line temperature, liquid line temperature, discharge line temperature. Loop pressures will come from uh, a different set of probes, and I'll show you in just a second here, but we have entering water pressure and leaving water pressure our loop flow from the chart from your uh, manufacturer's uh, literature, our ending water temp, and our leaving water temperature. Now, these are manual input. Typically, what we do is these would come from the toolbox. So we have the field piece probes, and these are doing our air side, which we don't have any probes hooked up right now. And we have our testo probes, which I'm using for the water side. Uh, those would be measuring our, our loop pressures and also our uh, entering water temp and leaving water temp. And those probes are approved for that type of use. In fact, water's a refrigerant in the uh, Testo application. The next, if you look here, you'll see there's three uh, screens here. That's what those three little buttons mean. So we got uh, obviously entering water, leaving temp, loop delta, and loop delta P. We thought these were, like if I was a technician in the field, these are sort of the same data that you guys spec on your um, sheet so they'd be handy to have uh, handy. 
We'll tap it again. You'll see we have our loop pressure. We have approach, which approach is typically for us, it's a liquid line temperature minus the uh, leaving water temperature. And this isn't adding up for some reason. We gotta take a look at that uh, because yours is actually a little lower. Compression ratio, we just haven't calculated yet. And then our discharge line temp. And then obviously our suction line temp, our superheat, subcooling, liquid line temperature. So that's your three uh, loop and refrigeration measurements. Now on the indoor readings, we hit the, the air side measurements and it'll be open up this field to see if we can hit return air temperatures, relative humidities or wet bulbs, supply air temperatures, relative humidity or wet bulbs. We do a mass flow calculation for airflow, which is actually quite accurate. It's been tested at uh, PNNL and um, Southern California Edison Labs and uh, NIST Labs. Uh, we can go over that a little bit later. But then it's got your return air and supplier external static pressures, and we hit uh, continue. So if we tap this again, uh, we had our measurements here. Tap it again, it's going to give us our change in enthalpy, which is you know, total heat BTUs per pound, our airflow estimated, our temperature split reading. That airflow could be entered manually if we want to use like a true flow grid or something like that. It could be measured, and it would actually override our estimated airflow reading on there. So two screens there. Performance-wise here, we have our, electric, our electrical and performance sections. So electrical is where we're going to enter our electrical readings. These actually come from a, um, uh, these actually come from the uh, uh, system type. So we can have package or split, and then we can have evaporator fan watts, and these will come from a redfish meter. Again, I'll just show you in the toolbox real quick. Uh, this is our watt meter, which would actually measure watts, and this is going to be uh, uh, Redfish, or we can do uh, field piece products in here, a bunch of different tools from different manufacturers that are available. So that gives us our electrical readings. And now if we hit the performance again, we'll get our, our, our measured ear, our proximate sear, our total external static pressure, and our fan efficacy. So if we hit the detail performance, this sort of does what are your uh, extended performance tables. So it's a ton and a half system and under this, under this set of conditions, we expect it to do about 1.4 tons of cooling. It's actually doing um, a total of 98,000, uh, or sorry, so a total of 98.5% 98, 98 of its normalized capacity. It's doing 101% of its uh, sensible and it's doing 90 percent of its latent and obviously latent is just if we have heat to uh, uh, remove right because sometimes you don't fall below the dew point temperature we got our sensible heat ratio um, we got our calculation for loop heat of rejection at 20,400 BTUs um, we got our airflow nominal our airflow estimated um, and then we use the standard CFM and actual CFM our temperature split at uh, 20.8 and target temperature split at 20.0 our dehumidification uh, in pounds per hour and gallons per hour um, we have our, cap our capacity index and efficiency index and this is like a more or less a these are internal like sanity checks for us that we're, we're pulling 99 percent of the power we expect to pop pull and at 101 percent of the capacity we expect to see and then we have our uh, EER at uh, AHRI conditions approximate, approximate system sear, approximate condenser sear at AHRI, our condenser uh, target power, total power, condenser watts, some additional information there. There's a lot of, of uh, cool stuff we're doing on the performance side calculations. Um, take it a step further, and again, we got our capacities and we got our EER here, then this is our outdoor air temperatures. Uh, and so now, what, what, what do we do with all this stuff? Well, obviously right now it sounds waiting for tools, but we do do some scoring, which we're looking at age and efficiency and temperature split losses, static losses, approach losses, charge losses. So the scoring is proprietary to measure quick, but it's based upon studies that have been done to um, uh, just more or less uh, show degradation over time with age or if we have capacity losses, like maybe due to a, a fouled loop or something, uh, how that impacts performance and we scored, um, scored appropriately. Uh, diagnostics, we're missing some key points for diagnostic here. We're missing, in this case, outdoor air temperature, which we don't need right now. Again, this is a, a development version of this, so eventually uh, we're gonna get that fixed and that'll give us some more accurate diagnostics on there. It's the same thing here. So it's, it's looking for outdoor air temperature before it'll do a diagnostic. 
In this case, what we need is uh, return is we need a loop temperature for that filter system. We're going to go ahead and we have a filter media here, an April air filter media. So you can pick your type of media you have, and it's going to automatically put the size, or you can put the filter type in. In this case, this is a probably a, a MERV 8 uh, type filter, actually MERV 11. Um, so we can select the MERV rating of the filter, take a photo of the filter if we want to do that. Uh, this is where we get into testing our system. So here, it's, these check marks are telling me I have all my loop measurements in, all my air measurements in, all my electrical measurements in, all my performance calculations in. And so I'm going to just save a test in of that data. Now this does a pass fail, and some of these are going to fail because um, we didn't make measurements. So like utilization voltage, I didn't put in a voltage, so it's, it's showing it as a fail. Um, it's looking at our temp split. That was in range. Or, well, let's go back up, sorry, before we go there. So utilization voltage is just, you know, the, the voltage coming into the machine. So you can have a voltage drop that drops it below the tolerance that's allowed. We account for that. Uh, capacitor health, just looking for a 0.95 or higher on our um, power factor. Temperature split, we're looking at you know, target versus actual. And fan watt draw, we're looking at um, less, less than 0.58 uh, watts per CFM. Total external static pressure below 0.7, 140% uh, of rated. Uh, fil um, air filtration, we're looking at the filter face velocity. How does they drain this objective so you'd pass or fail that? Our charge fill in range for superheat and subcooling, so that's a pass. If we have outdoor equipment, indoor equipment, those are subjective pass fails. Cooling capacity is a pass, and then we're at high efficiency because we're at 18.9 uh, sear. We hit continue on that, and then um, if we want to do any photo documentation, we can take photos of the thermostat, electrical system, air distribution system, filtration system, condensate disposal system, anything showing if we're adding or removing charge, uh, condition of indoor or outdoor equipment. So these are anything we want to just document along the way, along with these anchor photos here, which will always come at, up if you pull the project up again, which is your equipment models and serial numbers. Uh, corrective actions are just uh, what we did. So on the control system, if we level the stat, verify the setback program, plug the wire penetration, right? So these are all little things you're doing along the way, maybe checking your ground connections, verify adequate feed wire size uh, on there, verify it is supplied from a single circuit. Um, anything that we're doing that we want to we want to document along the way. So if we you know replace the filter, anything we did with condensate drain, the charge, add or remove refrigerant. Anything we do with our outdoor equipment, our indoor equipment, our cooling capacity, efficiency. So, you know, in this case here, um, you know, everything's good. So we'll hit continue. That's going to check off. Now, at this point, uh, the system's ready to be benchmarked. I'm going to just hit the benchmark button. And what that's going to do is it's going to sort of line up some targets um, and store information about the system for going forward so that we can always compare how it's operating today to how it was operating in the past, right? So uh, the benchmark's just gathering some design temperature differences. Uh, in other words, how much colder is the evaporator than the return air? How much hotter is the condenser than the entering water temperature? And that's gonna help us to uh, calculate targets going forward and see if things are starting to change. Go ahead and generate a report here, and it's gonna load a report list. We're gonna generate the pro report. And in this report here, Again, it's demo stuff, so it's going to give us our uh, vital scoring. Right now, we're just grabbing our combustion stuff, so it's going to get changed here eventually. Um, it's going to have our loop measurements and air measurements. Again, we just got to update our report here, but it gives you an idea of what we can do. Get some corrective measures and then some information about the system. So when we're all done with this, we can just save it to cloud, or we can just go down here. We'll exit exit and sync to cloud and that's going to save the data to our cloud system so a lot of cool stuff going on with this a lot of other features we didn't go over like remote data streaming and verification but this will give you a, a nice overview of what we can do with measure quick and uh, you know if we want to come back out and service in the future we'll have you know all the information handy and it, it really allows us to uh, uh, commission the system perfectly every single time